I've kind of found it interesting here over the last few years that, you know, even though we never as farmers used to spray fungicide in corn or soybeans or really for that matter even wheat, all of a sudden just about everybody's spraying fungicide and the crop where we feel it's almost a no-brainer type application is in soybeans in the early flowering or the early reproductive stages. Well, I remember talking to my dad about it 25 years ago and I said, Dad, how come the guys raising production seed corn are using fungicides every year, but we're not using them in our crops? And dad said, well, the economics just aren't there. The products cost so much and the value of our crop is so low. At that time, corn was like $1.80 a bushel and soybeans were $5 a bushel. And dad said, are we really going to spend 20 or $25 when we've got $1.80 corn? We, we would have to have a huge gain, but in production seed corn, that's a whole different ball game, whole different set of economics. And now you think about it in your soybean crop, if soybeans are worth 10 to $15 a bushel like they have been in recent years, it doesn't take many bushels of soybeans to pay for a treatment of fungicide. No, because the fungicides really aren't that expensive. It's going to cost about $15 an acre for a full rate. But the other thing is there have been farmers who've been using a half rate. We've done a fair amount of that even in our own operation. And one of the reasons why we've gone with a half rate in some cases is the beans are so small at that point. If we're out there at, let's say, R2 that's full flower, usually our beans are maybe two-thirds size, okay, or even half size of what they're going to be eventually. So the way we kind of look at it is if we've got half the overall plant mass, then why wouldn't we use a half rate? If you're in an area of the country that has lots of disease problems, don't get me wrong, I would probably say run out there with the full rate, but in many cases on our farm we are just running half rate. We've had great success with that. In fact, we've had as high as a 17 bushel side-by-side -side gain, and had you told me, oh, there's no way you can gain 17 bushels, uh, I would have said, yeah, you're absolutely right. You can't do that. But we did on our farm. I saw it firsthand. So it's one of those things where, hey, there are a lot of diseases showing up. We are gaining three to five bushels very often. And occasionally we do hit the home run and gain 10, 15, even 17 bushels. Well, I never would have thought we'd have those kind of gains either, Brian, because we don't really have that much disease pressure in our soybeans. Most of the time, most of the time. And that's the thing. Every once in a while, you do get downy mildew, powdery mildew. I mean, there are a number of different diseases. Or white mold. That's the one that well, we've yeah, had but, over the years. But here's the thing with white mold, then you have to be a little bit more choosy with your fungicide because we've used Headline quite often. We've used Preaxor. We've got Fortix now. I mean, these products are great for almost every disease except for white mold. With white mold, that's where we like Domark just a little bit better. And what we would suggest there, if you've got a white mold problem, is going out with Cobra right before flowering, going with Domark at early flowering, and then going with Domark again at early pod. Well, you need at least a couple of treatments there because where white mold gets into plants is in mainly where those blooms are drying up. That's a, an entry point for white mold, and that's going to happen for quite a while because soybeans are going to continue flowering and continue continue flowering, trying to get more pod set. And so yeah, you have to continue to protect your soybeans as you go. But most of the time, if we're looking for plant health benefits and maybe just some disease control, for a lot of growers, they're able to treat just one time. And we're going to do that at full bloom to first pod or R2 to R3 in terms of the stages. Now, when we're doing that one application, it could be done at the same time as a herbicide. It could be done with an insecticide. That tends to be the most common way we see fungicides going on is with an insecticide. And you know you just have to think about how these fungicides move in the plant, what kind of tips you're going to need, spray pressure, those kind of things, because it's different than if you're spraying Roundup. If you're spraying Roundup, you're looking a lot of times at big droplets, low gallons of water. With fungicides, we want to go the opposite way. We'd like small droplets and more gallons of water. Yeah, and it's not like you need a zillion gallons of water. It's not that big a deal. But the point is, we want you to get good spray coverage, because fungicides are not very mobile in the plant. They're not very mobile even within a leaf. So you have to have very good spray coverage in order to get the most bang for the buck. Well, when the, the plants are pretty small yet, that's not that difficult to do. For us, we're in 30 inch rows with about half of our beans, and we can easily get good coverage there. In our drilled beans, it is a little bit tougher. I would like to see in the range of 10 to 15 gallons of water. And you know, some of the companies are gonna tell you, oh, you have to run 20 gallons of water. You don't have to do that. We've had great gains running 10 gallons of water. It's not that big a deal. But just understand, unless you get great coverage, you're not going to protect
protect every leaf and every part of the leaf and then in effect you invested X number of dollars and you did not get that full value out of it. Well when we talk about fungicide use in soybeans it's growing in popularity across our country because it's been paying some really nice returns for the farmers who are doing it. When you look at the farmers that are raising 80 bushel, 90 bushel, 100 bushel yeah, plus soybeans Yeah, but even 40 or 50 bushel beans, Darren, we're getting disease problems, we're getting good gains with some of these treatments. I was just getting into the really high yielding producers around our country. This has been something they've been doing for a long period of time and many of those guys are doing multiple applications of fungicide because it's adding more to their yield at the end of the year. Well, another thing that's adding more yield is controlling our Weed of the Week quickly and effectively. We'll tell you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show.